One. Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemont, and this over there is Christopher Drage. Hey, people. What's up? Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585. Or visit their website at uh, HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. They will outfit you for all your hockey needs, fan apparel, and I believe they even have COVID masks. Yeah, and they also have referee gear for those of you that want to do that type of thing. No, the only thing they don't have for being a referee <laughs> is they don't have an icing chart so that you can fail and get the job. <laughs> Send all hate mail to Daniel Ross Goodmount at Facebook.com. <laughs> Yeah, well, referees get enough slack for that. They don't care. They're used to it by now. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but you might offend a referee. Uh, you never know. Those young refs might have a thin skin. All right, can we talk about this game? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, oh. <laughs> you, I, you normally start it off. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. All right, shots on goal. We're off. 41-36 for the Preds. Uh, Face-off percentage was uh, 61% for the Preds, uh, 39% for the Panthers. Both teams were two for four on the power play. Uh, both teams had eight penalty minutes. Florida had 21 hits. The Predators had 20. Block shots were 14-10 in favor of Florida. Giveaways. Again, Nashville, if you're giveaways, Nashville at nine, Florida at seven. Seriously, Nashville, you got to do something about your giveaway problem. All right, Dan, take it away. All right. So beyond that, um, I wanted to also say while you're here, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube page. Um, Facebook, we will be back with you tomorrow. So see us there. Um, uh, yeah, but please help us get our, our numbers up on YouTube. I'm trying to hit 50 subscribers. While you're at it, watch our videos, like our videos, and uh, subscribe. Try to get our numbers up. And you can click that bell to be notified every time we upload a video. All right. Get so that scoring. algorithm working for us. <laughs> All right. So scoring in the first was Jonathan Huberdeau. Huberdeau scoring his second of the season. This goal was unassisted at the 128 mark. Yeah. Then scoring at the 9 Oh, two mark of the first on the power play was Phil Forsberg with an assist from Ellis, his third, and Yossi, his fourth, or sorry, Yossi, Johansson, his fourth. Um, that was Forsberg's fifth, and by the way, yes, folks, that did go in the net. It bounced off the back crossbar, which is... I thought, it was, I thought it missed it, too. What the hell was that? What? That raw sound. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, All right, keep going, keep going. Anyway, uh, then scoring at the 10:09 mark, literally a minute later, almost, uh, was Jonathan Huberto with his third, with an assist from Nutavara, his third, and Hornquist, former Nashville Predator and Milwaukee Admiral, with his third. Then scoring his second of the season, fresh off of IR, off of one of the best passes I've ever seen from Philip Forsberg with his third assist, was Callie Arncock getting his second of the year at the 1548 mark. All right, so scoring in the second was Aaron Ekblad. Aaron Ekblad was, has his third of the year with an assist from Barkov, his sixth, and Jonathan Huberto at his seventh. And this was at the 54-second uh, mark of the uh, second period. That was on the power play. Then scoring at the 650 mark was Matt Duchesne with an assist from Philip Forsberg, his fourth, and Mikel Granlund, his third. Mc what? Duchesne's first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mikel Granlin has now a seven game point streak. Um, then scoring at the 801 mark was Al Alexander Barkov, his third, with an assist from Huberto, his eighth, and uh, Keith Yandel, his 
fifth, and that was at the on the power play at the 801 mark. Then at the 1554 mark, Johnson Huberdeau, Huberdeau scored his fourth unassisted. <sighs> Breathe. <laughs> All righty. Then we have in the third at the 1754 mark uh, was Roman Yossi with an assist from Matthias Ekholm, his third, and Philip Forsberg, his fifth, with Yossi getting his second of the year. Matt Duchesne scores at the 1903 mark on the power play with an assist from Cousins, his fourth, and Halla, his fourth. And then an OT at the four minute mark. Um, was Philip Forsberg with an assist from Victor Arvidsson, his fifth, Forsberg's sixth of the year. Nashville picks up the W, um, six to five. Why does it seem like it's been forever since Nashville scored? And I got gremlins on my side of the tech issues because I keep getting this weird growling sound. Okay. I got you. That's you. No, I got you covered. You're right. good. What? You're good. I got you. What do you mean I'm good? Just continue. Okay. What, what, keep um, going, dude. You got to read the rest of the stuff, man. I'm done reading. I'm just on camera. All right. Uh, starting in that was UC Soros. He had 19 saves on 24 shots. Stop uh, 17 to 20 on the even strength and two of four on the power play. Um. Uh, in relief in the third period was Pecorine stopping 12 of 12. Uh, he played 22 minutes, 52 seconds. Um, in net for the Florida Panthers, almost said Everblades out of uh, sheer habit. Um, but uh, Sergei Bavrovsky, he stopped 35 of 41 with... Uh, 23 saves, uh, even strength of 27 shots, and 12 uh, saves on the power play of 14 shots. So they were peppering the net on the power play today, and I do like to see the more shots you get, the better chance you have at a rebound and garbage goals when you games. Well, just the uh, pressure on the other goal is a good thing. All right, that's you coughing, having issues breathing. Yeah. Um. Then uh, your referees were Dan O'Rourke and Dean Morton. Uh, linesmen were Kyle Fleming and Johnny Murray. Uh, head coach for Nashville is John Hines. Head coach for Florida is Joel Quinville, former head coach of the Chicago Blackhawks. Yeah. Um, John Hines is the former coach of the New Jersey Devils and U.S. Development Program. Um Scratches for Nashville were Luke Cunning. He is day to day. Uh, Mark Borwicki, uh, Borveski, um, however you pronounce it today, I've heard it seven different ways. Yeah, me too. Um, and then yeah, it is you. Whoever's outside your house is uh, causing issues. <laughs> yeah, they're still uh, 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 doing um, uh, snow blowing. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Snow blowing Never mind. over here. So if you're hearing it, it's me. Um, anyway, scratches for Florida as former uh, Rockford Ice Hog Vinny Hinnestroza and former uh, Montreal Canadian Noah Unison. Uh, up next for the Predators is tomorrow. We have a game against Florida. Right now we are going to, uh, well, I think I'm going to have to run down the top 10 and their points. Yeah. Um, we have Jonathan Huberdeau with seven games played, four goals, eight assists, 12 points, and a plus two. Um, Alexander Barkov, he has seven games played, three goals, six assists, nine points, and a plus one. Patrick Hornquist, seven games played, five goals, three assists, and a zero plus minor plus minus. Um, we have Carter Vernhagen. Uh, he has five games. Uh, seven games played, five goals, two assists, and a plus four. Keith Yandel, he has two, uh, seven games played, two goals, five assists, seven points, and a plus two. Um, Aaron Ekblad, seven games played, three goals, three assists, six points, and a minus two. Anthony Duclair, he has seven games played, six assists, and a plus four. Uh, Yuto, Yuto Lusterainen, he has seven games played, 
two goals, one assist, three points, and a minus one. We have Marcus Nudevara. He has four games played, three assists, and a minus one. Um, and then uh, finishing that up is Mackenzie Weger. He has seven games played, two assists, and a zero plus. Now, keep in mind uh, what he just read might not have tonight's update. It does. So it oh, does. so everything is up to date? Because I pulled forgot. it up first, it had everybody at six games, so yes. All right, yeah, because Hubert lit, lit the uh, Predators up tonight. But it was a great game. Oh, by the way, coming into tonight's game, the Nashville Predators centers had no goals. And then Duchesne broke that by getting two tonight. Um, so if you yes. throw that stat out there. All right. Uh, their goaltenders are Sergei Bobrovsky. Um, he used to be good. Um, emphasis on that used to be. Um, because ever since going to Florida, he has not been having the greatest stats. Uh, he is right now 3 0 and 2. Oh, dude, uh, he is playing for Florida. Uh, he has. Um, hang on. Let yeah, me... I was going to say, what's his GAA? Because he does play for Florida, and Florida's not a great team. They're not. Uh, they're getting better, but they're not great. He has a, is a 0. 0.881 save percentage and a 3.57 goals against average. Then we and he has played four games. Uh, well, I got a feeling whoever get the vet, whoever gets to Vesna this year is going to end up with a high two GAA, just I because that, every game seems to be a high scoring contest. I have that feeling too. Um, then we have uh, Chris Dreiger. Chris Dreiger for them has played three games, has two wins, and an OT loss. Oh. Okay, sorry, I read that wrong. Sergey Bobrovsky is 3 0 and 1. Uh, Chris Drager has the other OT loss. Um, he has a 0.937 save percentage and a 1.95 goals against average. Uh, compared, uh, statistically comparing shots, um, the uh, Sergey Bobrovsky is seeing more shots than him. Even if you were to add tonight's game, it is just a gross mismatch of how they play in front of Bovrovsky compared to Dreiger. Um, much like he, here uh, in Nashville, where there's a difference in how many shots Saros sees compared to Pekka. Yeah, because they don't play defense in front of Saros, but they will play defense in front of Pekka. When you, when you got players that are picking what goalie they're going to play defense in front of, that's an issue with the team, and you might need to start eliminating players. Just saying, got to change that culture in the locker room if that's what it is in Nashville. Yes. Um, also, I wanted to add in um, our thoughts on the whole um, outside of tonight with Duchesne. Duchesne seems to be the only one that's producing up the middle points-wise. Mm -hmm. um, he's either getting assists or really trying to get that goal. Yep. Yeah, everybody else ain't doing squat. Um, and, and in particularly, we kind of have to center out Johansson here because he's getting paid just as much as Duchesne is. And Duchesne actually looks like he's trying, and Johansson, nope. And, and I, I think if that's going to be an a, a issue – Going forward, we may have to look into moving on from Johansson because There's a couple of players I think we might need to move on from. Yeah, and we might need to shake up the entire locker room. Like, listen, guys, we're not going to tolerate this crap. We yeah, got we're not rid of these rebuild, guys. Guy. Who could be next? Yeah, we're not in rebuild mode. We're just a couple of years out of what what playoff contentions. Uh, we have a good enough roster. I yeah. mean, we do make the playoffs the last couple of years, but we tend to not have success in the playoffs. And the whole point of playing in the playoffs is to win a cup. So we need to focus on what we could do to go far in the playoffs. Correct. The regular season don't really matter that much. Well, that's like winning the President's Trophy or for us last year, winning the AHL season trophy. That It was important to us because we never got to play the Calder Cup, but you get what I'm saying. For the Admirals fans. I'm clarifying that for the Predator fans watching this. Yeah. But the President's Trophy is more of a curse than it is a celebration. 
Yeah, because how many NHL teams have won the President's Trophy and the Stanley Cup? I think the last team to do it was Detroit. There's only three, and the Cup's been awarded like 120-some-odd times. Yeah, there's a reason the President's Trophy winner doesn't win the Cup. They're built for the regular season. The truly great teams are built for the Cup run. I mean, look at Nashville the year they went. We were a wild card. Yeah. So, I mean, no, none of us expected to get past the Blackhawks, let alone get all the way there. Yeah. Um, but just saying, you know, I think that going forward that this is important that we, we do talk about this. I'm not saying go out and bash the guy. I'm not saying that I, I hate the guy. I just think that maybe he needs a fresh start. Yeah, yeah. Because – he got traded pretty young to Nashville and, you know, Nashville threw him at top center and that sometimes can be risky. Yeah, it can be. Cause you can look good. And then there's a guy behind you who can make you look bad. Either way, this season's just been, I don't know, man, tonight wasn't looking good. And then they pulled it out of their butt at the end there. So. Hey, I, I do give them credit. This team, the one thing we can say, has no quit. Yeah, they don't give up. They don't give up at all. They fight to the very end, even if they're down by a bunch. They still keep fighting. So that is one one luxury we do have in this, this system. Um, so this has been From Milwaukee to Nashville. Don't forget to like, uh, comment on our videos and subscribe. Click that bell so you can get notified every time we upload a video. Check out our sponsor, Hockey Locker, at hockeylockermilwaukee.com, or you could call them at 414-800-7585. You took my bit. I'm the one that gives out the website. But anyway, <laughs> we will see you guys tomorrow. Later.